Well, Sonny and Cher was uh, developed as a summer show. I had seen them in uh, on the Merv Griffin show, and I really thought they let the screen. I thought they were really cute, the two of them. And I, I, I kind of recalled they had some musical career and that they were kind of washed up in music, but uh, they now had a nightclub act. And they were on the Merv Griffin promoting the fact that they were at the Americana Hotel. And we went to see him at the Americana. And on the basis of uh, what I saw, where they developed a comedy act, in addition to the singing, you know, their act, you know, the banter where she's constantly hitting him over the head. You know, and he played uh, the fool. So it's kind of a, a take on the old uh, Keely Smith and Louis Prima act. Not that different. But on the basis of that, we gave them a summer show. We gave them six hours and brought in, uh, much to Perry Lafferty's credit, a couple of Canadian producers, uh, Alan Bly and uh, Chris Beard, and, and, uh, and let them go with the show. And it was just a fabulous show. The most visually stunning show I'd ever seen. You know, these two, these two kids came out and they did their monologue and their song. It was great. I mean, it was my favorite show on the whole network. I love that show. And we put it on uh, 8.30 Sunday night in the summer for six weeks, followed by the six lives of Henry VIII, six wives of Henry VIII. And uh, it's an unlikely combination, you know, Henry VIII and Sonny and Cher. But the, it, it's the two and a half hours really did well as a, as a, a unit. And... Uh, and we brought it back. We brought it back as soon as we could. We brought it back in uh, late in the fall. And I think first it played on uh, Monday night, late Monday. You know, it replaced some, some show that didn't work there. And it did very, very well. And then we figured we were wasting it on Monday because it really had a lot of uh, young people's appeal. And we moved it to Wednesday at, uh, at 8 o'clock where it was in the top 10. Then for a short period... You know, I guess I was feeling my oats. I said, well, let's use it as a weapon on Friday, and, and that didn't work, and we moved it very quickly back to Wednesday, and where it immediately went back into the top 10. And I, about three years in, and they were really, they, were, they hadn't yet hit their stride. You know, the show came to an end because they got divorced, you know, which was a real heartbreaker. You know, on, on several levels. Number one, you, you know, I hated to see them get divorced, but we lost a very, very big show. Then she came back, and uh, she went solo, as did he. He went on ABC with The Sunny Show, which lasted about a minute and a half, and she did The Share Show, which lasted, I believe, two seasons, or a season and a half. And, uh, and then I was no longer at CBS, but they brought them back after they were divorced, and that, was, and that just didn't work. So, But The Sunny and Share Show, in its heyday, was a... I thought was a signature variety show. I mean, it, it was just no show had ever been mounted like that before. It was just beautiful. It had uh, animation in it, which I believe was a first. Uh, it was a lot of fun. The music was great. It, uh, and just when you looked at the whole package, it was it was really a good show and a monumental hit. And, th and that did so much for the image of CBS to be able to put a new cutting-edge variety show on the air. Because, uh, you know, the Waltons and all in the family are great, but a show like this was so smart. Uh, and I don't think we ever, I don't think we, we ever approached that again with another show. You know, we tried. You know, Bly and Beard did a show at the Hudson Brothers that, uh, for the summer, which was very well produced, but it just didn't... Uh, it didn't have the legs.